Diversity and inclusion is a crucial aspect when it comes to the progress of any society. Inclusion is important not only for the holistic development of an individual, but also for the society at large. I had the privilege of knowing one such community about whom I'm going to talk today. This is a story of moving towards inclusivity and a step towards bringing a change. In the year 1992, members of an NGO, Vivekanand Yuva Kalyan Kendra, got to know about a village which had no connectivity through roads, where people used to live under the trees, there were no houses, no electricity. It was, in a way, we can say, not on the map. This village is located in Padrana, which is a district headquarter of Kushinagar, Uttar Pradesh. It's a bordering district of UP and Bihar. The community which used to live there were called Musahars. This word is made of two Hindi words, moose and ahar. If I go for the literal meaning, it is rat eaters. These are the most marginalized and backward communities, and they come in scheduled caste category. This community had no agricultural land. We know that our country is an agrarian society and rely more on agriculture. We have more of rural areas. And there were these big land owners who used to hire the Musahas, and they would give them a place to live near their farms. And the duty of the Musahas was to catch rats and to save the crops of these big land owners. And in return, the land owners would give them some grains. And when in a very bad condition, sometimes the Musahas would also feed on rats. The members of the NGO visited this village. The villagers started running away, seeing these people as if the strangers have came to harm them. If you talk about their appearance, they looked malnourished. They rarely had any clothing on them. They f it felt as if they had never taken a bath also. These NGO members came back. They volunteered. They discussed. They bought some eatables, cloths, detergent powders, soaps, toothbrush, toothpaste, and next day, they visited this place again. They distributed everything, and the first thing they taught the villagers was the basic hygiene. By this time, these NGO members had also understood the need that this community needs to be noticed. They are excluded from the society. And with this vision, they came back. The reason why I'm talking about this case here is that India is a country of diverse culture. We celebrate our diversity. We speak different language. We are from different ethnicity. It makes us different. It gives us opportunities. But at the same time, it brings some challenges also when we talk about inclusion. And the biggest challenge here is that not everybody is open to change. We don't accept the change very easily. So same was the case here. Now, these NGO members were basically the alumni of a degree college, which was located nearby. They all were very active members during their college days. They, they were part of NSS, and they, along with their mentor, who was also a professor of geography in this college, Dr. C.B. Singh, and the convener of NSS and the secretary of this NGO, they decided that we have to do something for this village. So, if you want to bring a change in the society, the best way to do is to educate the people, to educate the generation that is coming next. So this is what they decided. But they all had their own jobs, their work commitments. And this village required full attention, someone who would go there every day. Mr. Singh was discussing the same with his wife, Mrs. Anuradha Singh, and she happily agreed to go to this village. So Mrs. Singh, along with two volunteers from the NGO, started visiting to this village. They met the families. There were 40 Musar families. Out of these 40, they were able to convince three families to send their children to study. Now, the problem was where to teach them. So there was a ground and some bamboo trees near it. So they figured out that, yes, we can take the classes here. And they started on the occasion of, on Children's, the occasion Day, of Children's Day, on 14th November on 14th 1992, 
they inaugurated Vivekanand Vidyale on the philosophy of Swami Vivekanand with five children. Now, another struggle came. These children used to play all the time, used to be free birds. Making them sit at a place was another challenge. And five children only. How would you bring a change with just five children? So they decided for some day, let's forget the education part. The first thing that you have to do is to motivate the children to come to the school, to start liking this place, to come and sit here. So they started with fun activities and sports and games. And within two months, they had 80 children, 80 students coming to study. Now, there was one more problem. Like in the beginning, I said, there was no road connectivity. The problem still remained there. So with the help of the administration, they got the sanction for the road, but it would have taken some time. So some of the civil servants, these NGO members, and the villagers, the college students decided, why don't we do a shramdan? So every Sunday, all these people will collectively come with their spades and baskets. And through shramdan, they made this road towards development. This was the first road through which they tried to connect this village with the town nearby. There is always a problem when you try to bring a change. There's a lot of resistance. And same was the case here. We human beings have a habit of doubting people before we start trusting them. Why do they want to help us? What is the hidden agenda behind them trying to help us? The hidden agenda was very simple here. They wanted this community to be known, to be accepted by others. This NGO had no money. So they were still teaching in this ground, uh, uh, and the students were coming there. The administration provided them a land, and that is how they started. They, had, they got their first infrastructure that was a hut. They started teaching in a hut. And like there's a famous saying by Majru Sultan Puri, how many of you know him? Have you ever heard? Main to akela hi chala tha janibe manzil magar, log saath aate gaye aur karwa banta gaya. So same way, some well-wishers came together, and they stole, like slowly, it didn't happen in a day, in around 12 to 13 years of time, they got a building of eight rooms, where they have around 300 students studying. They have still retained their bamboo tree to remember the roots from where they have came from. And they have computer lab, they have children's uh, library as well. So all this for the education part. With the help of government's Indira Avas Yojana, the people got their homes as well. Because Musars are the landless people, never ever in their dream they would have thought, thought about that they would get a home of their own. Now, they are well connected with the society. They are well connected with the town through roads. They have electricity, they have toilet facilities, they have regular health checkups. All this happened. This couple has also trained them, uh, the women of this village, for different kind of skills like, you know, stitching, knitting, pickle making, and uh, sericulture, uh, so that they can collectively come together in a cooperative groups and can earn some money. But after all this, still there is something which is missing. Not many of the Musahars complete their studies. And if you see the uh, research as well, this also validate the point that I am trying to make here that not many Musahars complete their undergraduation or higher education, or let's say they, they are in government jobs. If you reflect upon it, what can the reason be? The major reason here is poverty. When you have to choose between, see, these families are big families. They have four to five siblings in every family, a lot of children. So if you have to choose between education and earning livelihood for your family, they always chose the second one. And if we talk about poverty, every community is sailing in the same boat. The situation is similar for everyone. So same is the case here. Their main occupation is basically they uh, work in agricultural fields. They uh, work in brick kilns. They work as daily wages, vihadi mashdoor. 
in different construction sites or they migrate to other states to work in the factories from where they can earn some money and send it back to their families. You must be thinking, you must be wondering why I'm talking about them today. Because I have grown between them. I have grown up seeing them. As a young girl, I used to teach them and that is from where I decided that I'll be a teacher. I'm grateful to my parents and my mentors who started this organization. And another reason for discussing this topic here is that we, the educated one, we, the privileged one, I consider ourselves privileged because we have all the resources to try to bring the change. We have the accessibility. We can collectively come together to work towards it, to develop a society or an environment where people understand that they will not be judged based on their economic status, based on how they speak, how they appear, how they dress. It is with the collective effort we can bring or make an inclusive society, an equitable society where everyone feels equal and valued. Are we ready for that? Thank you.